Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about Salesforce Object Query Language for Admins or better known as SQL. I have gotten tons of comments on this topic and so I wanted to make this video talking about how you can use SQL in your daily day-to-day -day life even if you are not a developer. So when we talk about SQL, we usually associate it with code and so it might feel a little overwhelming and complicated but trust me it is really actually simple once you understand the basics and the foundation of it and if you are an admin or a ba you are probably running reports or list views to get the answers that you need and SQL can be a really good tool um, to add to your tool set because it will save you a lot of time and you can quickly get the answers that you need by running just few lines of code and don't let the fact that it is code scare you I will walk you through some simple techniques, simple examples that will be really helpful and hopefully will make you more confident. Another thing I want to say is running SQL in your production org is not going to break anything. So definitely don't feel pressure that you know you must get it right in the first run. The worst case scenario that might happen is you might run into an error because you have a syntax error or some other data issues. but Rest assured, you're not going to break anything in production if you try to run SQL in production. Okay, with that being said, let's jump right into it. I'm going to flip-flop between the presentation and we're going to look at actual code. So just to set the foundation, let's look at the syntax. So this is where it's very simple if you read. So select, all the red things are required. So you need to have a select in your SQL. Um, because when you're saying select, you're basically saying, give me these fields. So it is like choosing the columns in your list view or choosing the columns in your report. So that's what select does. It basically gives you the columns that you're interested in getting. And field API, so let's say you were querying account with um, name, address, stuff like that. You will basically separate them by comma so select name, comma, mailing address or billing address, comma, account type, comma, and so on. Um, you want to keep your columns to bare minimum and only the things that you really need for that query. So you can use field API. So it's basically that. And it has to be the API name. It can't be the label, unlike the reports and list views where you can use label. So you need to use the API name here. From from is basically saying, what object do I want to pull those fields from? So obviously, if you are using account, you want to put account here. So again, this is also API name. Most things in SQL are API name. So you always want to go to your object manager and make sure you're using the right API name. And where is optional, but highly recommended. If you are not using where, then you know, you're going to get all the records that's in your org. And that might be like in millions. So you might run into issues there. And usually when you're running a query, you probably are interested in finding something about the data. So that's where it's yellow because it's optional, but highly recommended. And then you're going to put some conditions there. So where is like your filter in the reports or your filter in the list views? That's basically what where means. So it couldn't be you wanted to get all your accounts that starts with A or all your accounts that have a particular industry type, you are interested in getting all your accounts that have healthcare or all your opportunities that are supposed to close this year. It's very powerful. I'm going to blow your mind by some examples, um, but there are some really fascinating, cool things you can do in SQL with just one line of code. So we'll look into some examples, but this is a very basic syntax, right? Select. API names of the fields separated by comma from the object name where and we're going to talk more about condition. Then this gray thing is basically it's optional, not always necessary, but you can also order your fields. So let's say you were wanting to organize your result in alphabetical order. So you wanted to see all your accounts, but in alphabetical order from A to Z, then you would say order by name ASC ascending. If you wanted to see from Z to A, then you'd say order by name, DESC. You can also order by uh, the amount or the numbers. So it really depends on the field that you choose, but you can do that in SQL. So you can organize the data that you're returning in a particular way. Okay, 
Hopefully that was clear, very basic syntax, I'm trying to keep it as basic as possible. Now let's look at the where, what does where and how to use where conditions. And then we're going to jump into an example quickly. Okay, so where is like your filter, as I said, and you can use different comparisons. Now there will be some differences between how you use your report filters or list view because there you can easily choose in the reports of what you want to use. There's a drop down here. It's a little bit of practice that you have to do. So you can say where account name equal to and whatever value there is. And so let's say if you were querying on a string or a text field, so you'll say equal to and then you put the quotes to actually find the value not equal to if you're using a numbers field for comparison then you'd obviously use less than or equal to this wouldn't apply to text fields so it's a lot of also logic common sense right if you are using equal to then you can use it for text or numbers but if you're using less than or greater than then you don't want to use text there you can use numbers like is a good one to use with text. So let's say if you wanted to search all the accounts that contain certain things on there, any text values, you can use like for that. And I'll show you some examples. So for now, just understand these are different operators. In and not in is also really powerful. So let's say if you already had a list of account IDs and you're looking to find all the opportunities. So in is basically used when you have a list of things. Similarly, not in. And if you're familiar with flows, you are already doing things like this in the decision element of the flow. So you already are coding, but just from the UI, essentially it's kind of doing the same thing in the back end. When you're using the get data query in flow, you're doing some comparisons. You're doing, you're actually writing software um, unknowingly. And then includes and not includes is also really powerful, especially if you have multi-select. So multi-selects are different animal uh, and they have their own comparisons that you can use. And then just like reports, you can also combine different wares. So it doesn't have to be one or the other. And the way you'll combine is by using logical operators. So like and meaning just like formula fields, you have and so both has to be true for me to get the results or is one or one of them can be true and it will return the result. Not is basically opposite. First thing, let's talk about how do you access SQL? Where do you even access it? So let's say this is your production instance or sandbox, right? Where do you run SQL? So I'm going to tell you the easiest way to run it is by using an extension called Salesforce Inspector. It's a Chrome extension. If you are in finance or healthcare industry, I highly recommend just checking with your company to make sure it's okay to use this extension. All you need to do is go to Google, search for the extension and download it. The reason I recommend this is because it makes writing query really easy. Next thing is you can also go to setup and go to developer console. This is where you can physically write queries for yourself. So you can go here in the query editor and write query right here. Um, so this is more of an old school way. So you'll have to write everything yourself. There is no like support for you. There is no like suggestions. You know, if there is errors, errors will appear, but otherwise you're kind of on your own, um, which is fine. If you follow the format, it's pretty handy as well. So that's another way. Or you can also access Workbench. That's a third party. That's also an API. You can, you'll have to allow Salesforce to use logging to Workbench. You can also use Workbench. Um, so there are different ways to do it. Um, in this video, we're going to use extension. So I'm going to go there. Um, so once you install the inspector, you will see these options appear. And I'm going to go to data export. Don't worry, I'm not exporting any data. I'm just um, going to my query builder. Put into practice what we just learned, right? So I said we need to add fields name. I'm going to say from. So I'm just going to leave that piece empty for now, the fields. And I'm going to use account. Oops. So you see that, right? So the moment I put account, Salesforce Inspector has access to all the fields that I have in account um, that I can easily use here. So it makes it really fast to write queries, essentially. 
So I can say name, it comes up in case I was not using the right API um, or I did not know, I did not need to go to the object manager to find the API names. I can put billing address. Just for fun, I'm gonna do that because, and then billing city. If I say type, type comes up. Any other fields that I want to add, I can add here. So comma separated fields from account. So that's from, this is the object name. And let's add a simple where. First, I want to see the data. So I'm just going to do this. Obviously, it's a test. And one thing I did want to show you, that's why I added billing address. Uh, billing address is a composite field, as you, as you might be aware already. So it's going to come up like this. Um, it's going to bring all the address attributes at once. It's clouding my view, so I'm going to remove it. I'm going to keep it simple to billing city only. OK. So I have some test accounts here. I have 19 accounts. Um, there are some customer direct. So if I wanted to filter on customer direct type, then I would do where type. I can just select that equal to. And another powerful feature of the extension is also it will also show you all the different pick list values that is available for that pick list field. So you don't have to manually type it. And it also adds them in a nice code. So this is the code that you're going to use for Sockwell. It's a single code, not a double code. So a lot of people make mistake of using single code, double quotes here. It's actually a single code for Sockwell. So if I wanted to do that, I can do that. And it now only gives me all the customer direct type accounts. Now let's use the logical operator here. As we said, we can have and or. Let's stick to those two. And what if I wanted to only see accounts that were in New York? So I'm going to do billing city equal to. Since it is a text field, I'm going to put quote here and say New York. OK, so that is how now it should only return me this record right here. There you go. So I've got and it's very simple once you start working through it, um, practice it. And then what if I wanted to, instead of using, maybe I didn't want to type everything here. Let's try out the like operator that we just saw. So if I wanted to do like, like is a little bit different. So for like, what you want to do is if you wanted to start with new, let's say you wanted to see all the accounts that have new in the beginning. You can do new and then use the percent symbol. Okay, so percent symbol indicates anything that starts with new and whatever it ends with, we, we don't care about that. Basically, return me everything that starts with new. So, and I only have one account, so that's the same account I'm getting back. Still the same. Um, if I wanted to also return let's say name like and by the way sockwell is not case sensitive so you can put small case but i like to always use uppercase it's just a habit for me um where name like and if you wanted to let's say you know have anything test anywhere and return that so in this case i'm not saying starts with test i'm saying if the name contains test anywhere doesn't have to be in the beginning, then return that to me. So it's not a great example because all my test accounts start with test. What if I do three, three, right? If I just do three, three or just three even, I should get some results back that has three in it. There we go. So test one, two, three, four. It's not in the beginning, but I'm still getting that result. Obviously, in production, I don't recommend doing this because you might end up getting way too many records to handle. But um, that's how you use like. If then for multi-select, um, you would use includes. Now let's try to use the includes for multi-select. So I just created a field called subtype. That's a multi-select field. And first, I want to query all the accounts where subtype is not null so that's another thing that we learned is not equal to you can use it that way and 
null is basically going to give you anything that has null values it works for both boolean and text fields and number fields it works for everything even date and time fields so i only have three accounts that have some values in subtype now if you use let's say equal to and just put the healthcare value what do you think the answer will be here think about that I'm using a multi-select field and I'm using equal to healthcare. So if you thought you're gonna get one result when you do equal to, you're correct because equal to is an exact match. If there are other values along with healthcare, it doesn't matter for this query because it's only looking for that exact match, which is why with multi-select, do not use equal to, you might be potentially getting wrong data back and you might be misreporting on this. So what do we do? We want to use includes for multi-select. And when you do includes, oops. Um, okay, so for includes actually, you need to also use a bracket. And anywhere you are dealing with list of things, you want to use brackets in SOCWALL. So that's another call out here. So we put the names, equal where, subtype, includes. Now we should see two results. Now we've got healthcare with test one, two, three, four, and healthcare and life sciences um, as another result. So that's where SOCOL can get really powerful if you wanted to quickly see what other values have this particular data uh, in multi-select especially. Okay, so we looked at um, most of the operators. Let's also quickly look at the greater than equal to. So for greater than, I'm gonna use where I'm gonna first add amount for opportunity so that I can look at the data. We have some opportunities here. Now let's say I wanted to run a query where I wanted to only get data greater than 45,000. So I will say where amount is greater than this value. So if you notice the difference, I don't have to put the quotes for numbers. Numbers are just going to be by itself. Okay. So it's going to give me everything that's greater than that. And then similarly, if you are also using a Boolean, for example, if you wanted to query on a checkbox, then you would say equal to true or false. You don't have to put any quotes. Okay, so I just queried my opportunity with some Boolean values to show you what, how you can query that. And I have one closed opportunity. So if I wanted to query opportunity where is closed is true, then I don't have to use quotes again. I can just use true like that. So play around with uh, different field types. So homework for you is going to your sandbox or production org and just running a bunch of queries with different fields and then you'll get a hang of it. Time and date are different thing where you have to run queries differently, um, but this should cover the basics. So you can start to play around with this and the more you practice, the more confident you're going to feel in your SOCOL skills. That is all for today. Since this video is getting really long, I am breaking this out into multiple videos. Next video is going to be about relationship queries. Please do check it out. That will help you query parent and child relationship as well as other advanced tips that you can use in your day-to-day -day life. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions.